Next, we're gonna check these on the Wheel Checker Deluxe. Warning, we're just having fun. If you take stuff too serious, this channel may not be for you, buddy. Man, oh man, here we go again. Another week and, uh, well, we're not gonna be working on the half haul, so if that just got your hopes up there. Now on the second channel last week, last Thursday or Friday, I did post we tried to do some carburetor swapping and a little cleaning up underneath here and uh yeah it was running better until it wasn't. Don't die on me! Whoa! <laughs> hey crap happens. That's the fun about the second channel. I don't got a lot of time, so we just we did what we could and now we left her half running and it is what it is and uh anyhow we're not gonna mess with a half haul. No, we got that old Datsun King back from the old interior shop. Now, I ain't no meteorologist, okay? Uh, but just to kind of forecast what I'm kind of thinking here and brainstorming. Uh, I want to get this thing road functioning, drivable. And uh, so, same with the Datsun King, guys. And I know some of y'all's tired of the box trucks. And I'm kind of ready to change it up, too. But... It don't make no sense to invest all this time and money into something and get it where it's almost on the road and then just push it off to the side and not finish stuff up. So we gotta finish up some loose ends. Uh, I do wanna convert this one to four wheel drive. I posted on the Instagram where I was looking for a Suzuki Samurai and I already know everyone just cringed. They're like, oh, you gotta do Toyota. Oh, you gotta do Jeep. Those are quarter ton. You gotta, you, man. <laughs> The four-wheel drive community thinks you gotta have one-ton axles to drive in your backyard when it's wet. That's all I'm gonna say about it. Uh, guys, I'm not talking about like rock crawling, mud slinging, look at us rip. I'm talking about I wanna try to keep it looking just like that. It's just I can put it in four-wheel drive when I need to, okay? If that makes sense. Uh, but, I mean, I'm just, I may have found one, okay? For the right price of cheap 99. I mean, cheap as can be. It's about 30 minutes down the road and I'm not saying I'm going to grab it Monday, but uh, let's just say I got a date somewhere to be Monday and there's a Suzuki Samurai involved and I'm required to take some money with me. So once I get that, you know, we may be doing that, but there's something else that I'm kind of really itching to tear into that's gonna make some of y'all happy. And I bought this thing almost five years ago and I've called it the Someday Model A and we're getting pretty close to a Someday because I want to build this when we're still in this old shop. I don't want to build this at my new place. Over the last year, I've gathered that chassis. I got that 283. I got us a, a 200 R4. Uh, I've kind of gathered enough where we've got majority of it. We basically need to get some wheels and tires and little odds and ends and it's ready to go. So, you know, be expecting that. I'm not saying like next week we're tearing into it, but probably before winter. She ain't got a cam, she's got a vacuum leak. <laughs> Can't get her to idle quite right. She needs a little love and attention. So we got this thing back from the interior shop. And as you see right now, I got that old Dancing King shirt on. Uh, most of these have sold guys, but we do have a handful of like the extra large, which is weird, we usually sell out of that. Uh, we released three new designs, all that, you know, stickers, goodness, all the good stuff. Is that puddingsfabshop.com if you wanna get you some of that. Uh, but I'm happy to have me some of this back. That's our truck. Now she's been at the interior shop. Uh, yeah, you've seen the seat a little bit in that car show video. That door opens real good. But the carpet was not done. 
or our floor mats here or a custom little shift boot or look at them nice little kick panels all tucked and everything now top stitch taylor knows i'm rough on that stuff okay that's why he gave us the paper mat and then these replaceable floor mats because from my truck here he knows i can be rough on carpet i tear that stuff up that's what happens when you drive the fire out of them and don't treat it like a show truck so hopefully i'm gonna try like hell not to tear up our interior because uh, it is way nicer than what we really need for this thing well you take that nice headliner and you just follow it down to that sweet seat look underneath oh surprise dimple dies there they are boom this thing's looking good and around the truck she needs a little work like we got some stickers here and uh we got some just a handful of things to do around the truck as a whole i need to get a tag and stuff sorted for it or we can just start driving it guys start enjoying this thing so this may not be my greatest video ever produced to date uh but i've got a list of little odd and ends we can do and uh me and my wife got a crazy week with trying to get everything going for our house okay trying to start construction there break the ground sign some papers uh y'all better do a good job don't you don't want to catch old sketcher up the ass i don't think we'll have a problem now speaking of problems uh i'm not the greatest with stickers so let's see if we can get these installed or if we uh cause problems step number one you want a nice clean surface so prepare your surface being the non-professional sticker guy that I am, I'm choosing Windex because it cleans and shines glass. Vinyl stickers, essentially the same thing as glass, if you did not know. Oh yeah, we want her squeaky clean. Uh, there's just, you know, if someone gets behind you, you've got missed opportunity of advertising with them looking at the back of this thing. So we gotta get something back here. Step two to having a successful sticker install is to have a professional squeegee for applying your sticker. Professional. Now, I know sometimes they say you can spray stuff, then you put that and you squeegee it out. I don't know if that works on this vinyl. All I really know is I didn't like how these end right here, and I thought we could maybe break it up like that-ish. Oh boy. <laughs> Mark, if you're watching this, I'm sorry, buddy. We're just going for it, guys. We're just going for it. The worst that happens is it looks absolutely terrible. Highly likely. And then we just have Mark fix it, I guess. I really was trying to, wanting to stay off that lip there, but that's all right. And hopefully, since we've got vinyl on vinyl action, It'll be a little forgiven. <laughs> Basically, I'm a, I am a professional. Shoot, that's pretty good. Shoot, I don't see no bubbles, no specks, no nothing. I think since we came up on this edge, we need to come up on this edge a little bit. Y'all know mama didn't raise no punk, so let's just go for it. It's always helpful when that wind's blowing too, you know. Well, this right here gets her hot. It activates the glue on the back of the vinyl for maximum adhesion. You dang right, baby. Please tell me that I can't, that I won't, that I fail, that I'll never make it out, yeah. Please tell me all the bad, never good, fill my head full of every single doubt, yeah. Please say any negative thoughts. I pop off when I hear people say I cannot. I get off to the thought of proving everyone wrong. We nailed that. If you're behind this thing, you're already going to be curious what the heck's in front of you. But with that, now the curiosity is overwhelming. We get in a two lane. Boom, here you come. You try to go around me, except I'm in a Datsun that does a buck 20, so you can't even pass me. And you look over, and all you can see is that arm swinging, just getting it. We probably could have done a little bigger head, but we'll take it. And most people think uh, lower trucks are worthless, but I noticed my driveway was a little rough, so I just, I just went ahead and graded it earlier. Try to do that with your lifted truck. Now back in here, we got a couple things we can do. One, we can take out our, our stuff we accumulated. And there's my old adjustable seat. 
Oh, got some of that heavy duty Insta floor left over, I see. That's good, we're gonna need that on that Model A. So the first thing we're gonna look at back here is I think we need to do some type of extension on our wheel tubs. It ain't gotta be nothing fancy, but we basically need to take that down or connect it over to this where stuff can't come up right through here. I'm not saying I stopped that just perfectly for that crap to be able to be thrown back here. But if you do a burn out on the grass, you'll definitely fill this back area up quick. <laughs> That's my evil scissors laugh, by the way, if you're curious. Man, I'm excited seeing this thing. It's, uh, it's just one of those things where I know most people will say it and go, I probably would have never built that, but it's cool. Uh, you look at the interior. I probably would have never used those colors, but man, it's perfect. I don't think I would have thrown myself on the side of a damn box truck, but sure is neat. If this thing don't match the personality of the channel, boy, I don't know what does. May have got distracted and forgot to grab our other tools we needed here. Uh, I got ADHD. That stands for attention done headed down yonder. Sometimes it's just all over the place, okay? But get your finest templates making tools because we got some templates to make. Just wiggle worm in here. I don't think we're going to have to do very much or overcomplicate this. Uh, let's just start with breaking that where it can swivel or pivot. I feel like that's a pivot. I'm going to mark this in down here where we can trim it or hopefully it clears. And same thing, we're going to mark this in and we're going to be sitting with a real rough draft right here. For now, I'm going to set that there because I just got to thinking about it. And guys, I was going to build them out of sheet metal. But obviously, the lower we can have them hanging, the more crap we're going to keep out the back. But also, the lower they hang, the more likely they're going to get hit by something. Just pulling in and out of places, speed bumps. There happens to be a rock in the road. I hit a Pot County skunk. They're three times the size of a normal skunk. You know, so there's it just being sheet metal. You hit one good thing and it's going to mangle it up. So uh, I just got us a, a big rig mud flap on order. And I think we'll cut it down and we'll bolt them in. And then boom, you got flexibility where we uh, lose our mangle ability of the sheet metal. And you also maintain replaceability. Long story short, I think we're better off to build them out of uh, a rubber than metal. Since we're waiting on that now, uh, let's check for air leaks. You gonna get a little air in the front and a little air in the back. The good news is our, our tank tank pressure, uh, Top Stitch Taylor said it never dropped off. So we're not losing any air pressure out of the system. Uh, it's when the truck is aired up. We've got leaks from either the gauges, the airbags or something where it leaks down, which ain't a huge worry. Uh, but if we can find them and fix them, let's find them and fix them. Ugh. Thought that may have been soap and water, but that was vinegar. Oh, don't worry. I got some mixed up right here. Gotta see if I can maintain the aim. Oh, yeah. We got decent aim. Out of, well, decent aim. Sometimes I miss at 3 in the morning, if you know what I'm saying. Our fitting's right down in there on this airbag, so we're going to spray some in there. Now I can see down in there, it's hard to get the camera in there. I'm not really expecting leaks because I checked these before I ever installed them. I think we're good in there. So all of these are our lines going to our bags and our gauges. Then we can check the dump valve side too. And I'm letting this stuff sit here for a minute and I'm not seeing any leaks on this neither. All this other crap's our supply and we know it's not leaking so we ain't worried about it. We'll put our little paper mat back down and try not to make a mess in here. Don't mind our clamp holding that right now. I forgot about that. Uh, I'm not seeing any leaks down here neither. So wherever our leak is, it's obviously a very tiny, tiny leak. Pop that hood. Well, hello there. Good looking. Don't worry about that. Get these front fittings sprayed down. And of course, both sides. 
Oh, found a leak, found a leak. I was just about to give up hope on finding one. Holy cow. Y'all see them bubbles growing down there or what? That soap and water never lies. Never. Now what's it gonna take to fix it? Uh, we'll see. We're gonna support that front right corner. We're gonna let the air out of that bag. Shoot, that whole thing's almost out of there now. I'm gonna jack her up. Kinda wiggled my noggin in here. Cause pulling off the wheel and tire's too hard, you know. Oh yeah, we definitely got a good turn there. I never tightened that. Can't imagine why it was leaking. I'll drop our airline down here and plug her in. Guys, I got my head stuck. <laughs> if I pull hard, I'm gonna lose an ear off that fender lip. Oh, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to drop down low. Drop it down low. There we go. Trying to put air in there and uh, it's just leaking out. So I'm off our... Oh, no, our airline <laughs> did not pop out. Uh, our fitting popped apart even better. Took shot. Uh, <laughs> I didn't make it in the trash can. I did somehow make it outside. That's pretty impressive. Hmm. I don't know if I have any more of those. I thought I ordered some because the back ones were falling. Uh, the back one's messed up, so I bought some good ones. There we go. And I replaced the two back ones. Uh, oh, man. Oh, no. There, there it is. We got two. We might as well just replace these two front ones since we're, we know those fittings are a problem. Kind of sucks to backtrack and do this type of stuff. But at least it just happened in our shop where we have tools, uh, the parts to replace it, and we weren't on the side of the road somewhere, guys. Try to look at the positive in things, you know what I mean? This was probably just a blessing in disguise. Pretty easy to get that airbag out. So we'll pull that out right there. We're gonna wrap that new heavy duty fitting and some of this good blue stuff. That's pretty tight. What do we have up here? We got the airbag tester. That's right, we'll just test for leaks before we put it back on. Get a little air in her. Little spray check. She should be good to go. Hopefully we can get her back up in there pretty, pretty easy. Lower it down a little more. Now we get the fun task of trying to get these bolts started and it's whipping me. But, oh, I got them. I got them started here. Uh, overall guys, not too bad for just being able to kind of jack the front end up and pull this airbag in and out. Oh, tighten the top, tighten the bottom. Got our airline on, leak check. She's good. Damn you, tornado sirens. Uh, that's how I know it's lunchtime anyhow. This whole driver's side, maybe 10 minutes, guys. Not recording, just wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. We got her dead. Considering to change a tire on the backside, we gotta disassemble the whole booty of it. Uh, at least we know if we ever gotta work on the front on the side of the road, she's pretty easy. And oh yeah, that driver's side one fell apart too, by the way. Now we got our old floppy uh, battery holder there. When we went to the car show, our battery had died and a gentleman brought us this one. We swapped it in. I didn't think it was gonna fit, but with enough thumb power to hold that. Oh, yeah, she gonna go. Lock her down. So since we're doing random crap and we just happen to be up front, uh, as I went to take this to the interior shop, I discovered our adapter kit for our Weber. 
Uh, we've got some vacuum leaks going on up there. We got to fix it, which means we got to pull this apart. And I can't say I'm overly excited about that. But it is what it is. Don't y'all worry what in the custom redneck breathery base plate we got going on right there. First, we're going to cut off our fuel. Just unpop that old choke right there. We're going to ditch our hose clamp right here. I usually spill gas everywhere. What's going on here? We didn't lose a drop. Uh, pop our vacuum hose right there. Unhook our little throttle spring return thingamajigger. Pop that cable and uh, she should be ready to pull off once we get them bolts. I get nervous about over torquing this stuff and uh, these are kind of loose themselves, just a nut on this. I actually got a few turns on each of them nuts. I kind of get nervous about stripping that stuff out, so I always go easy on it. So before we pull off all them adapter plates, I'm going to slap all this crap I just took off the carburetor back on, and we're going to start it and see if we fixed our problem just tightening up those. kill that before she gets too hot yeah she was still revving up spraying that so we got to pull it apart we get our gasket right there and well it looked like we had everything torqued pretty decent anyhow so i noticed as i was tightening up them nuts a minute ago that our two studs here were turning as well so if those studs go through the bottom of this adapter plate then technically if they're past the bottom they're going to start picking up and yeah that's why i just hate these little things because just getting them just perfect sometimes a pain this is the crap they don't want to show you on television they just oh yeah we put this this on here it fired up life's perfect uh when huh Who, who's whose project always goes that smooth just flawless this is really the reality of crap of things of building yeah see that see how that's coming out past the bottom so that's going to actually pick up on that causing vacuum and there's our last piece right there looks like we got a little blue and uh, some black permatex she's a uh, self-sealed off so we're just gonna pop a hole in her and uh polish this this one off here just want to make a mess with this stuff just get it everywhere special little drop of blue for these and we are ready for some reassembly that blues that instant sticky and boy is that sticky first time i put that together i was pretty soft on everything uh that baby's torqued now our second plate here where we're kind of sticking out i put something on these uh but sure enough yeah that one's just turning so let's double nut this tighten them into each other then we'll get on that back bottom one where we can back her out yeah, I know I put something on them. Wonder if we can take a chisel and a punch or, you know, something like that. Maybe knock those into each other where it don't want to spin anymore. Just try to shove some of that stud over into that plate. I shoved a chunk over and uh, that piece just shoved that chunk right out. So I don't think that plan's going to work. We'll just pull all them and uh, let's go get this on the truck. Oh, all that stuff is torquing good. I'd find it really hard to believe we're leaking anywhere in there. Y'all yeah, gotta excuse me, I just got these hands yesterday so I'm getting used to <laughs> using them again. <laughs> so I did some digging around and instead of using the studs, uh, 
I think that bolt right there with the washer will be perfect. So hopefully we quit picking up on that adapter. Threads just pulled on that one. Barely even tightening on that with that. They just pulled on that one. I know it going together smooth was too good to be true. We were four threads deep. Barely even torque on it. And whoop, here they come. All right. And we're going to get her cleaned up here where we can handle it. I'm going to see what we can't do here with some roll pins. And I should probably do some like research and see that this pin is this size. So you should drill that size hole. But I don't got a lot of different. I don't have a large variety of proper tools anyhow. So we're going to drill this size hole and then see what happens. I'm going to punch it to mark it. Any kind of looby dooby is good enough for me right now. Now we're gonna grab our pin kit, and if we don't have one that works for that, we may just have to keep going up in size, you know. What about that? That's pretty good. Oh yeah, that's real good. When you set your depth, uh, don't do it off the, the wide side, do it off the narrow side. <laughs> uh, I was not paying attention and I may have drilled all the way through that, so that's super intelligent. So we're gonna pull that out. I don't really know what the hell I was doing right there because I'm not good at that, but I think I got her sealed up. So we'll tap that in. After this, all that's left for it to do now is crack out, so <laughs> maybe this will work. Maybe it won't. You guys got too hot on me. Camera died, said it was too hot. Uh, I drilled those out, just put everything back together like you see me take it apart. She's idling pretty good now. Now it is idling better, it ain't like all crazy. That spacer uh, wet me pretty good and that took way too much time. So we're gonna slap that back on. Now this, yep, she had the old split cause that's an old original hose. I found this one online, Gates 18700. That popped on there good. This thing's ready for the, boy, what? <laughs> Something is peeking in here. Uh, I don't know what we're doing with a piece of a brush in there. I don't know guys, I'm just, I'm just glad that piece of brush ain't in my motor on either side, okay? Don't y'all worry about my old belly, okay? Uh, my shirt was all nasty. This thing's like a little sewing machine, guys. She just smooth. Brakes are a little soft still. I think we need to bleed them. They probably got a little air in them. Hey, I see our Speedo's working. We're in third gear going 55. This is uh, the first time I've had it up to these speeds. She just backfired and died, and I don't know what the heck just happened. We're gonna get here on the shoulder. Fired right back up. She just died funny. Uh, hey, one thing I can say that there ain't no denying this, this thing rides good. Whoever did the air ride suspension on it, nailed it. Oh baby, that's some smooth riding suspension. Of course that engine's nice and hot now, so things are moving, expanding, which would hopefully make it seal, 
but sure running like it's got a vacuum leak again. So yesterday I ended and uh, the intake gas intake gaskets are probably leaking because I was spraying the intake pretty close and it was revving up. Uh, anyhow, I got those on order. Uh, it's hard to tune something out when you're just chasing vacuum leaks. Now this morning we had to meet out here uh, to see about some dirt work issues we've ran into already, which is fun. Okay. But I got some tools, not a lot, but we're going to uh, rob a couple pieces since we're out here. And because stuff always goes super smooth, uh, I did bring a sawzall from the house. So you just look west for that old pepper and head that way and you'll be in about the right spot. Hang a Leroy at the pepper and you make it to our hood storage here. And I'm looking for a decent piece of trim that goes on the front of this. Here's our original hood from our uh, truck. Now, don't mind my custom painting right there. Or, uh, or we may have had a little hood scoop at one point. But this one looks in decent shape if we can get her off there. These studs don't want to play nice. I'll saws all off the whole front of that hood. Think I'm playing. She should be a 10 mil. Just playing. She should be a 8 mil. Or maybe lying about that. She may be a 9 mil. No, nope, 8 mil will do. Of course, I didn't bring no luby dooby, so we're just gonna break all these. All of them broke except this one. She don't want to play nice. So we'll figure out how to make that work. Uh, I don't think any of these had the Datsun emblem. I was hoping we could find one for a grill. I was gonna slap it on. Oh. I think we do need these. Lucky there, we even get our little nuts for it. We'll take both of them. Looky there. Look what I just found. Let's see if we can't break them off too. One broke and one the thing came out, but either way, we got us the emblem. Now, lastly, but not leastly, uh, I don't think it's going to have it, but... If it had the matchbox little distributor, yeah, which it don't. Well, if it had the one that had its own little ignition module and everything, we were going to take it, but I didn't think it had it. But never hurts to check. I know these other ones don't have it. All right, so we're going to gather our goodies and uh, head towards the house. Our intake gaskets came in, but uh, we got to help old Slick real quick. So if we don't get these on, y'all blame him. <laughs> Or they say with with friends like you who needs enemies. No, if you want friends, get a trailer. Then then you'll have friends. That's how it goes. Or know how to do body work. <laughs> y'all see how he turned that around real quick. I'm very last second all the time rec uh, recruiting Slick for work. He recruited us. I just got to ride along and look pretty and supply the trailer. So we can make that happen. Slick brought us out in the country uh, where you don't accidentally pull up into driveways, okay? <laughs> but we got some uh, half-cut rigs going on over there or something. Look at that rear end. So here's what we're after here. Slick's going to get this one running and do a little rush repair on her. Well, someone's got straps plumb everywhere. Oh, boy. That's a record setter right there. That's about like that Caprice we drug home. She's air, condi air conditioning. Mm -hmm. She's fancy. A little power <laughs> steering, power, power everything on this rig. So she's got a little dinger right there on the fender. She's got the nice little built-in toolbox right there. Oh, she's locked though. We ain't gonna find nothing good in there. Oh, look at that. This thing's cherry. That's good. Ford, never the best. That's weird. I can't believe someone would put that in a Ford. Uh, inside's in pretty good shape. Oh man, look at that little bitchin' headliner with the trim pieces and everything. Now you can even uh, hang your laundry if you need to. We got the divider in the back with some uh, old abandoned shit tickets. Rockers and stuff look pretty good. Here's your map around Tulsa if you get lost. 
bed floor look at the old bed floor she looks all right thought she might be a little soft underneath there but no she's pretty good and then she's last tagged in 2000 so good 20 22 years we've backed into a thing or two at some point just a little rust on her nothing nothing hurt. now she's ready to strap some stuff down if you don't believe me just ask her a couple of hooks right here i think running with a little polish on her she'd be a good truck right there <laughs> Just like this, the hair kind of well she winched on pretty easy it looked like the front passenger tire kind of jerked for a second so i don't know if maybe the brakes in there are wanting to oh i thought that was trying to fall off no that that mounts at an angle she set up for some towing uh look at this clamp on little pocket thing here you put your coil spring in and I guess it kind of uses your bump stop there to guide the top. She's also got a clamp on heavy duty sway bar on this sucker. So someone was towing or they got a, we got a secret race truck here nobody knows about yet. <laughs> she was either towing or going, one of the two. Hey, she had a big two guys. Yeah. Y'all know me, I only buy a strap if it's, you know, 40 foot long because that's what we need. <laughs> look at them overloads on her too helper springs oh it's got my lucky number on it right there i spotted that and i ain't even got good eyes on me but there she is 77 uh, from arizona and she's a historic vehicle uh yeah we can tell <laughs> oh there she is she's got the old flatty in her still and she is down in the sand she is not a bad looking little rig though oh billy wants it oh dnh man oh he's dnh is buying this one yeah. Should have known it. DNH, my old salvage yard buddy. That must have been what these low profile tires came off of. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Mortsky. You like them flexi hoses, so I just I showed this for Mortsky just to make him happy. Oh it does. It's got the little V6 they put in them, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean this is a Jeep things, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> most most folks wouldn't get it yeah jeep things right that's a custom two-piece fender you hit the right bump hey she's got damn 12 gauge floors though best part on this thing's the little center cap of the steering wheel that thing's still in tip-top shape she's basically ready to go <laughs> just needs a battery <laughs> oh, <that's> a <laughs> Need some electrolytes. Yeah, she needs something. <laughs> Goodness gracious. <laughs> That's the worst battery I've seen in a while. Oh, oh, oh. We were almost stuck in sand there, Slick. <laughs> you put her in four low or what? Yeah, I had to. Of course, we, we got to stop here and have a look-see before we leave. Yeah, look at that monster right there. Got to have a white wall. I don't know. I wonder what we had going on here. What do you do that requires you to cut out just that amount of cab? I don't know. What kind of gauges we got up in there, huh? Got some good gauges. Some old Stuart Warners. I see the SW. Uh, yeah, I now, the body on this one's actually in pretty good shape. I mean, minus the back of the cab, but who wants to talk about that, you know? She don't look like she's got no drivetrain up in her, but I guess she's decent enough for what she is, and what she is is old truck in the woods. And I'm sure y'all wanted to see us. Hey there's rock there uh <laughs> work on this but this one's for all slick so we're just gonna help them drop her off here this sure is a lot easier with help <laughs> she's doing the damn jackrabbit <laughs> I, to I told you that truck was all there this thing we, we could pick it. <laughs> and that thing is heavy and it rolls well. And that's why I was scared to let it go. I think we would have ended up over there past the trash cans. <laughs> I guess Slick went to uh, clean a rat's nest and found him some friends. It's good times as long. How many were there back there? Oh, that's the only one I saw. So far. 
Oh, man. <laughs> like I said, he's going to have fun with that one. Uh, I, I ain't got much done on this thing, but my main concern is getting it running right, so we're going to hop into these intake gaskets. That's a man got to do to get a half-decent running truck around here. We're just going to lay that out of our way. Of course, we just got to pull our bolts and washers here, and I know I'm doing a lot of talking, uh, but yesterday we almost wasted a half a day trying to figure out uh, exactly where we're going to put our house. Uh, big old lack of dirt situation since everything's kind of downhill over there. As you can imagine, uh, so long story short, as of right now, I think we're getting a pond. Sure, my wife's picturing a pretty pond, and I was like, hell yeah, we'll get a pond. I need somewhere to drive something. <laughs> and I think I mentioned this is our first time ever building a house, so yeah. Whole new learning experience for us. Most folks don't know, uh, Dodson comes equipped with a quarter inch extension holder. That sucker couldn't leak if it wanted. There we go. Luckily, with everything kind of simplified on this rig, uh, it's kind of easy to work on. Next, I'm gonna use my extensions and we're gonna try to pull out all the bottom ones before the top ones. That one's got your spring line. Of course, that one I just dropped, and boom, there we go. I don't know. So I think pulling our uh, header off when we built our exhaust is what actually got us in the situation because she was sealed up before that. I'm going to just try to sneak in here and do a super job with our super scraper. Oh yeah, I think we'll be able to sneak around and clean this all up without pulling this off. Green gasket come with that exhaust uh, manifold head or whatever. I mean, uh, this one's a fail pro. I don't know which one's better. Uh, I'm sure someone out there does, but hopefully this one's good to us. There's quite a bit of debris on this thing, so I'm gonna get that off, especially here on our intake ports. And I notice these ones are perfectly round, and that may kind of look like a kitty cat if you have any kind of imagination. And uh, these ones aren't perfectly around. Uh, Maybe we're supposed to port and polish the, the rear couple intake ports there. I don't know, but if she seals, she seals. And boy howdy, let's hope she seals. And our center bolt here on the header is going to hold that and get us all kind of lined up, guided, started, whatever. It's going to get us going, all right? She's step number one, if she'll start. With those three bolts started, uh, all of our stuff wasn't really lining up the greatest. Just softly run them down to kind of hold all that lined up in place. Going back together, I'm doing my best to use our torque wrench here, uh, which Ain't the easiest because we got to use our uniwiggler. But the first time I put it back together, I used this method and apparently it worked that time. So we're using the torque wrench. We're hopping around. I did it from like 80 foot pounds. Then I went to like 110. Now I'm going around at 144 inch pounds, not foot pounds. Did I say foot pounds? I don't know what I said. I was just talking. She ain't pumping very much gas, I can tell you that. As in, our filter's empty right there. 
It sounds like it's running funny still, but it's barely getting gas. Uh, but also, I was kind of spraying around and I didn't hear it idle up for the first time uh, yet, but I don't know, something still don't seem right on it. We put some gas in her, got her fired back up. Uh, I think we may have fixed our vacuum leaks, but it's still, still, it's not running right. So I'm just trying to think here, guys, and uh, I'm trying to think to around when I thought I started having issues with it running funny. And uh, our little block off plate that we ported an elbow out of to vent the crankcase to, uh, when we added that and drilled it through shortly after. Now, I'm not saying that's all of our issue, uh, but what I am gonna tell you is, I just seen that someone said that works online. I have no experience doing that right there except for what you see right here. Uh, closing that off, obviously dropped her down quite a bit. So for now, what we're gonna do is uh, pull that off and plug that. I mean, hell, we're all friends here. Uh, Y'all tell me where to take that too and I'll take it there. This right here, I'm gonna take it to Plug City. <laughs> she had a hair too much tension on her. We're gonna turn her idle up. Guys, my brain hurts right now. Uh, I don't know if it's, I don't remember if we did that and then adjusted timing and that's why it's so off, but it's like super duper off right now. So I'm trying to remember back. We probably timed it when it was set up like this originally. Then I added that, probably tuned on it and timed it again, which got it all off because we were trying to make everything happy with it pulling that much. And now we're gonna take it back. Who knows, we may end up getting this thing on the road yet. She's as close as she's gonna get with that timing light. The timing light's messing up, it's all over the place. She's one of them adjustable Harbor Freight units. And with her set at zero, down there on our timing marks, we're right at 12 degrees. Now that's what we wanna see because 12 degrees for this engine is good, guys. But why I don't trust this light is uh, we should be able to change that to 12 degrees right there. And it should move our white mark up to zero degrees on our little thing down there. And it don't. I have to adjust this thing all the way over to dang like 40 degrees. And then it uh, finally moves up. So it ain't. I think this is the only problem. But still, uh, we want to verify it with another timing light at some point. So let me tell you what I would do if uh, I was gonna do all this again. The first thing I would do, these studs, the way I drilled uh, that hole and roll pin those where they couldn't turn, uh, I'll do that on every single one I ever touch again in my life. That's a good idea. It worked good. For the first time I think ever, I got to really like torque those things down and I wasn't scared. Number two, I would not reuse the intake uh, exhaust gasket again, even though mine looked like in good shape because it was all you know new anyhow. Uh, obviously doing that got me in there doing it again. So just get one on hand and change it since you're in there. And lastly, but not leastly, good old number three. Find somewhere else to route this thing. Don't take it there like some of the internet suggests. Those guys may think they're running all right, but uh, I guarantee you we're gonna figure out something else to do there, cause that ain't it. And screw it, I'm feeling frisky. So how about we just throw in a number four? Uh, have a decent timing light. I thought that one would be good enough. And here we are. Surprise, number five, don't run out of gas. <laughs> Hopefully you guys can learn from my mistakes. Hey, Speedo's accurate. I'm checking it against my app. Speedo's pretty spot on. Yeah, we got something going on with our brakes. They were kind of choppy. Uh, back there's where this thing died on us last time, did the little backfiring and man, this thing's running good. Uh, this thing sure 
sure seems like it's gonna handle the highway a lot easier than the e-haul does. Someone's excited because she just hit a thousand followers on her TikToker. Here's your chance to tell them your TikTok. You just tell them it's a Warren 84. She's a TikToker, I'm not. I made one and they kicked me out for not logging in in like three months or something. This thing runs so smooth. I'm hoping the tag agency is open. One, because it's almost lunchtime. Two, it's Friday. So, you know, some places like to close early and celebrate that weekend. Front door says open anyhow. Just laid her out for the first time. Got us a tag. Uh, only about $200 worth for not being done since 2011. We're going to go to the old diner. And, uh, guys, I'm so stinking happy right now. I had to get up to speeds here to see if our arm was going to flap at highway speeds. And, uh... Them arms look fine, but they're not even wiggling one bit, guys. You dang right, baby. So I kind of ran her around town a little bit there, and man, just running smooth. It runs so smooth and idles down so good that I kept thinking it was dying, and I'd rev it up, you know, as I was coming to stop, and I'd have to listen, and I'm like, oh no, she, she's good. She's good. Think we're gonna have a good little truck? Uh, right here seems to be about where you can drive around at. Uh, it still rides super smooth. But guys, that back bumper was taking out everything. Pulling in and out of places. Uh, that thing's just demolishing everything. Uh, so right here is probably going to be, you know, kind of where you drive around at. Two things I want to look at. One, see if we can get this door opening smoother. Uh, just a handful of times I got in and out. That's annoying. And then two, uh, I want to bleed the brakes. There's old Bill. Camera already got you. You ain't sneaky. <laughs> you got that old wide angle. The wide angle. Let's go up underneath here. I think I've been seeing a drip of something underneath it too, and I ain't looked into that yet. It may have not been dripping. I thought it was right here kind of underneath our slave cylinder, uh, but all that looks fine. That initial burst, we definitely got a lot of air out. Passenger side, same thing. When I first fired that unit up, boom, 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 big old jumps of air. So hopefully that was our soft brake right there. Yeah, I think she bled out good, and I think I see the drip I've been chasing. That one right there. I think I just found it, guys. Just run that along the edge of that oil pan. And, uh, yep, that's where she's coming from. Oh, yeah, all these are uh, pretty loose, I see. So, I mean, that's good if we can just tighten them and fix that. There's another oil drip underneath there is back off the transmission cross member. So it's definitely all the oil coming off of that and kind of flinging back, which is why it's kind of been random probably. Uh, we're going to do some torque in here. And at this rate, it'll take me about 30 minutes and we'll have her. So I'm just going to get her dead. Call me a sissy, guys, but that made me say shit the bed and hot damn at the same time because my shoulders were on ever-loving fire uh, fixing that. Now, I hope that fixes our problem because I would rather just tighten oil pan bolts and hopefully our problem goes away uh, instead of it being the slave cylinder. And that's what I thought was leaking, and I hate trying to fix them little leaks, so hopefully we're good to go there. We ain't got no half-ass build around here, so she's gonna get the premium stainless button Allen head. Button head Allen. Allen's head has a button on it. Good looking bolt. All right. Had to do a little Pilates, but we got it. That's better. There we go. That's pretty good right there. Those seals have been on quite a bit longer and keeping this door closed is gonna help these break in. So we're gonna leave that like that for now. 
And then if we gotta adjust on this one a little more down the road, that's what we'll do. But for now, hey yo, I ain't too mad at that. I think she's part near ready for another little test. Uh, don't leave that off there. You don't wanna be shooting brake fluid up everywhere. Did y'all think that was me riding off into the sunset? A Victor? Well, my name's not Victor, and there ain't no beautiful sunset around here. Uh, here's what happened yesterday. I got out there driving, uh, running great. Everything was feeling all right, and I, I just hit the highway and took off. And uh, as I went to slow down and everything, the brakes felt like, almost like when you have a warped caliper, guys. I mean, it was pushing the pedal back hard. Uh, I think having the air in there before I could feel a little bit, but not like a, as strong as it was this time. I was like, man, that's pretty weird. Uh, of course, I, I had the camera off because I wasn't recording me driving, so I, I was trying to get the camera going back again. And I, I went to pull up to this stop sign, and a guy pulled up next to me and... Uh, <laughs> Were they wobbling? Yeah. Okay. Basically, he said my back wheels were back there doing the boogaloo, just going wherever they wanted. Uh, I was hoping it was something as simple as lug nuts were loose, and I got here, and uh, the lug nuts were perfectly tight. Here's the issue. The issue is the wheels were hitting on these little nubs, whatever you want to call those that are on our drums, so it was clenching to that, which made everything feel tight, except it was on there a little crooked and i'm guessing that kicking that drum a little crooked too uh is giving us our little womp 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 in the pedal we're feeling uh so that's all right okay we, we know our problem those are hitting uh i think the center bore is gonna hit i think that will hit the center of our axle because that's bigger so maybe we can machine out the center of our wheels Maybe we can machine off them three nubs and get some clearance where we don't have to grind the back of our wheels. Uh, the real big issue now is that wheel's bent. At least we got her running good. I don't know how much the camera picks it up guys it's wobbling pretty good uh i triple verified it i li literally took it and put it on the back of the half haul just to make sure it was the wheel uh i checked that axle for run out uh with our little thing of my bobber uh so i know it's in the wheels i checked this wheel from the other side it's bent too now i don't know if us just sucking them down on there and the little small amount of light driving we had done. <laughs> light driving. They were like that for maybe a couple miles on the truck. Maybe a couple miles. I don't know if these wheels are bent from back in the day and I just never knew it. Uh, I didn't I didn't feel them driving down the road. I mean they're, they're kind of cattywampus like this, but they're not really going up and down. It's all kind of like that. So, I mean, it, it was tracking down the road. It ain't like I was hopping back there or nothing. So I don't know if they were being in the past. Uh, now I thought the front ones seemed like they were going on funky. I was totally clueless to the rear, rear ones having issues. Uh, all I know for a hundred percent is we got to check all four wheels. We need to see how many are bent. Then we got to find four good wheels. Then we gotta figure out a solution. Then we gotta figure out white paint. Then we gotta figure out getting tires mounted. And then hopefully everything works out. Now because I'm having to use washers and stuff to check it over here, like I said, we checked the one on the half haul. So our half haul will be our little guinea pig. So that's one of our front ones. She's got a little to her, nothing crazy like I was seeing yesterday. Here's our other front one. Same thing. She's a little whoopty dude. Guys, I think my whole life just might be a lie. That wheel's definitely bent too. Is every damn stilly just bent? Every old stilly. That's a 14 for, for a Datsun. It's just bent, huh? I'm beaten, defeated, broken. But I think I know what we have to do, guys. 
think we're gonna have to slap the grandpa saw blades on the old dancing cane <laughs> over my dead body uh, i guess we're going steely hunting so we're gonna take these oldies and go see if we can find us some more oldies oh 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 she's barely balancing she's barely balancing will she hold on time will tell you dang right she'll hold on There's one, a whole lot to go. These steelies are a little different style. Uh, they got them holes cut. I don't like them as much. And uh, as I keep pulling these off here, three of them from being down in the dirt uh, are rusted pretty good on one side, of the, one side or the other. So I'm glad I pulled all four off before I decided to pay attention to that. Got us two wheels to try here off the orange truck so basically we could have pulled them instead of swapping everything everywhere just consider it a morning workout you know can y'all see all that pollen from blasting through the field <laughs> custom yellow headlights right there now y'all know we're uh, limited on our resources out here so i got to go over here and get our jack stand i knew i stored her over here oh that'll definitely work like I was going slow, then slammed it. All right, we got two dots and stillies here. We can try also. Fixing to get us a, a adapter and run them babies right there. Next, we're gonna check these on the Wheel Checker Deluxe. Wheel Checker Deluxe is running a little rough, and this one's slightly untrue, but probably our best one so far. I have a new theory, and that's every uh, steel wheel I have ain't actually good. They're all bent. The Eagle Eye says she has a little whoop de doo too. That's right, get the hell out of here, weeds. That's old weed whacker right there. So my conclusion here is uh, my whole life's a lie and none of these stillies I've ever had is good. So here's what I really think about this whole situation. I think one, we got her running awesome. I think two, our front ones, they are hitting a little bit. You can see where the wheel's rubbing right there. I don't think they were thrown off in a way that was causing it to be wobbly. Uh, Why the rear ones were really wobbly, because the steel wheels are hitting on these in different areas and it's just kicking everything crooked. Now, after checking all these wheels, I don't think I have a perfectly true wheel anywhere. The two that were on the front were pretty good because they're wobbling about the same as them. And they are wobbling the same as what's on the back of the half haul and that wheel was on the yee haul and I drove the crap out of it and I never once had someone come up and say, hey, your, your tire looks like it's wobbling back there. Uh, I'm seeing a very small amount, but it's there, okay? I'm just, I'm acknowledging the, the fact it exists. It's not perfect but I don't think it's so imperfect that it's not runnable. I think we can use those four wheels if we need to. My buddy Charlie swung by, said he knows a really good wheel and tire shop that fixes stuff in the city. He said, let me take them up there Monday, see what they say, so he took them. And uh, I've got to figure out what I want to machine, whether it be the center bore of the wheel, or I don't really want to pull axles. Yeah, I got some figuring out to do here on what's well, got to be machined to clear because it's got to have the right look guys and i want these wheels and tires on this truck no ifs ands or buts about it really we got to figure out something we can't space out because uh look we didn't knock the the peak of that flat that used to be rounded our wheel and tires already tight and that thing sticks out so far that uh yeah she kisses the edge you know what they say progress is progress even if you have to progress backwards so you can properly 
progress forwards, it's all progress. It's a little kick in the nads after getting it running so good, but it is what it is. We can't do nothing besides what we got to do to get her dead and make her right. So that's about all we got time for this week. I pretty much got nothing done. I wanted to get done because we were just trying to get it to run. And then, boop, here's this. Uh, but y'all know I'm on the Instagrammer. I'm on the Patreon. Uh, we got that good merch. Them old Tainer logos. That's probably my favorite shirt right now. She, she matches this truck good, don't she? I said, don't she? Oh, she does. Uh, we appreciate all the support there. All the all that's at photonsfabshop.com. My brain is going like a million miles per hour right now, so I can't really focus. But I appreciate y'all watching. And I will see you guys next time. But don't forget, sitting on your ass won't finish your salute. Er, <laughs> Sitting on your ass won't finish your project. Unless you need to sit on your ass to do some calculating and come up with the solution. There, if I want to use the word solution, we'll use the word solution.